broadcasting. Should see people start to drop in in a second. We'll just have the Facebook stuff. Rachel, hi Rachel. Chantel, hi, welcome. Hi Debbie. No, I'm talking to people coming in. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Stephen. People are tuning in now. That's good. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Always oh, in. It must be a slow news day for everybody else. That's all I can say. <laughs> people that bored. So, well, you know what? <laughs> Thanks. I'll tune in to see Glenn. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all right. I haven't seen him for a while. I can't believe how hot it is. I've got the door shut and it's just like a greenhouse, honestly. <sighs> Make it a quick one, Glenn, so I can open the door again. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be rattling through it, don't you, Fred? Yeah, not a problem. Excellent. Right, Facebook's live now. So that's right. good. By the time this gin and tonics run out. <laughs> gin and tonic, excellent. <laughs> that's tonight. I've got to be waiting to have in the garden. Good man, good man. Uh, cool, so I think... Yeah. Uh, Did you do it before you hit deadline? Title? Oh. Done, done. Oh, it's as good as it's going to be. There we go. Okay, cool. So it looks like most people are here. So thank you very much, attendees and delegates. I know you're on mute and chat and you can't see us. Um, but if you've got any questions for Al, please drop them in the chat. Or if it's easier, in the Q&A section. We'll have a bit of a session at the end to have a discussion. I'm sure there'll be lots to come out of the presentation from Glyn that you'll have questions to ask. We are now live on Facebook. Um, thank you for joining us. And thank you for Glyn for giving up his time. For those that don't know me, I am Chris Morris, the co-founder of Shoe Social Media and co-founder and founder of Digital U. Um, this is its third year running and it's been all about helping and educating businesses transitioning into an ever-increasing digital world by giving some time, I suppose, giving it some time to help educate and yeah, give people knowledge so they can then take away into their business particularly during this pandemic time that we're all going through. Um, so that was the, the idea, that is the idea, and it's this whole week we've had loads of people coming from 18 speakers asking to help, um, of which Glyn is one. So Glyn's going to, I'm going to hand over to Glyn in a second, he's going to talk to you all about innovation management in a disruptive world. Um, known Glyn for a while now, absolutely fantastic guy, Hearts in a fantastic place and he will help you if he can. So I'm going to hand you over to Glyn and I'll think. Wow. What go. a build-up, Chris. I, uh, th thanks very much indeed for that. And uh, firstly, can I just say this is the first webinar that I've ever delivered, and it kind of feels strange. I'd, I'd much rather be at the front of a room where I can read people's body language, uh, see the ones who've gone to sleep, um, and engage people. But that's the way it is. That's the world we're living in. And in a way, that's sort of what this presentation is about. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to, uh, to Chris and Rachel for this opportunity uh, on what is probably the hottest day of the year, I think. Um, bearing in mind that last year we were at Denton Hall and it absolutely poured down all day. But this shift to the online format is in such a short period that uh, Shoe Media have managed to achieve. In some way, it demonstrates the innovation and creativity that really I want to focus on today. So moving forwards, uh, if I can get my slide to move forwards. Today's agenda, I would like to briefly, because I appreciate we don't have too long, cover what RTC and the EEN network are all about. A quick overview of that. Why we believe innovation is so important and why now is absolutely the time to be doing it. More to, the more to the point, what is innovation and how should you be managing it? Um, I would like to give you a quick overview of the uh, programs being run at the moment by uh, RTC North and also some aspects around financing the ideas that you as business people are going to be coming up with. A short look at global collaboration, what we mean, and the partnership opportunities that are available through the uh, Enterprise Europe network, of which RTC are a part. And then sometime at the end for any Q&As, I would like to think that your cues, I can try and find some A's for them. If I can't find the A's immediately, I will come back to you with um, the answers uh, at a later date. Quick introduction about RTC North. Who are we, what we are about? 
We're a not-for-profit business. Um, and our sole function is to deliver funded business support programs across the north of England. We have some activity in Scotland through the Scottish Manufacturing Advisory Service, but 95% of our activity is across the north of England. We've been established for over 30 years, and we've got around 80 employees over the three offices. The head office in Sunderland, uh, the office that I work from in Leeds, and we've got one at uh, Daresbury near Warrington. Point of interest for anybody who may be uh, uh, in that space, we are currently recruiting. We are looking for innovation advisors and we are looking for desk-based research officers. So if you or anybody in your network is uh, considering uh, a new career, a change of career, a very challenging and interesting career, please uh, give me a shout at any point that you can. The Enterprise Europe Network, of which RTC are a part, exists to help innovative businesses grow, as it says on the screen, and scale both nationally and internationally. It is funded by the EU and by Innovate UK, which is the UK government's innovation arm. Um, the funding for it is gradually transitioning from the EU across to Innovate UK, and the EU funding will uh, eventually tail off to zero because of is, are we supposedly leaving the EU at some point? I think, I think it was talked about somewhere down the track, but we've kind of, uh, it's got lost somewhere. But we, the point is that we are part of a global network. We've got local partners uh, in the UK, and we've also got partners in over 65 countries around the world. And what that does mean is that we can offer a range of advisory and support services, including the items listed on the screen there, innovation management, internationalization, and I will revisit this um, a little bit later on in the, uh, in the presentation. The disrupted world that we're living in, wow, yeah, well, who could have seen this coming? UK businesses are facing a lot of challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We all know that, we are all in that space. For some businesses, it's about survival. Um, and for other ones, bizarrely, it is about unbelievably rapid growth. I mean, when you think about, for example, opposite ends of the spectrum, a pub desperately trying to survive can't wait for the 4th of July to come. And even then, it's going to have to radically change its business model. Think of that versus a manufacturer of hand sanitizer, which for the last three or four months has been absolutely pulled out of the place, working 24-hour shifts, desperately trying to find raw materials. Very, very different experiences of a pandemic. But in a time of crisis, the focus is understandably, obviously, uh, often on short term aspects of the business, such as survival. Um, and again, let's get real. Who is looking at a colour chart to redecorate the living room when your kitchen's on fire? We've got to be pragmatic about it. First, you've got to put the fire out. But it has meant that there's been reduced time for future planning. I have noticed a difference in the last probably six to eight weeks where people are beginning to come out of the uh, headless chicken, batten down the hatches, get the staff on furlough, just survive phase. And they are actually beginning to look at what are we going to do to get out of this and to build future resilience and growth. Because it is absolutely crucial to the local business community and to UK economy that we get out of this uh, survival phase and into a growth phase. We've got to do that. And you as business people are absolutely instrumental in making that happen. And it will happen through innovation and potentially global collaboration could play a part in that as well. Why should you innovate globally? Uh, well, potentially global innovations and global collaborations can offer you product and service diversification. Uh, it can offer you new markets. It can offer you new supply chains. It can bring in new resources and skills. With the digital uh, world that we're living in, very often you can outsource your uh, requirements to a lower cost part of the world without, and, and it can be done overnight. You, you, you task the, uh, uh, the supplier at five o'clock in the evening by nine o'clock next morning, it's sat there in your inbox waiting for you to use. These kinds of things just could not have been thought about 10 years ago, but this is the world we're living in now and we all need to embrace it, get hold of it, make the most of it. Personal development, absolutely, you and your team. Um, 
learning about new cultures, learning about new ways of doing business, upskilling yourselves. These are all going to form part of the answer. And it's all about new challenges. Yeah. And trying wherever possible to have a little bit of fun down the, down the track. Business ought to be fun. I'm a big fan of business being fun. If it's not fun, well, you're probably doing the wrong thing. But yeah, Chris seems to agree. I'm on that page, Chris. Thank you. Innovation uh, is a difficult word. It's a bit nebulous and it's probably overused and it's probably wrongly used in a lot of cases. But what does innovation mean to you as audience members? Normally, this is where I would take answers from the, uh, uh, from the listeners. Sadly, not able to do that today. So I will just have to bring up what I think maybe some of you might have said. Is innovation new ideas? Well, certainly that's part of it. Yes, it, it is new ideas, but it's a lot more than that. Is it about doing things differently? Potentially, yes, that can be innovative. It can be incrementally innovative. Wikipedia, that wonderful source of all knowledge, which clearly never makes any mistakes anywhere, says that it's an application of better solutions that meet new requirements, um, uh, unaddressed needs or existing market needs. Yes, okay, Mr. Wikipedia. I, uh, yeah, that's not a bad definition um, and it covers a lot of the aspects of innovation. At RTC, we like to think about innovation as the successful exploitation of a new product, service or process organization or business model, which is new to a company, new to a market, or new to the world. The key couple of words in there are successful exploitation, because innovation by itself, unless it is pure blue sky thinking research, unless it is sexually successfully exploited, is it a true innovation? Well, in its own way, potentially it is, but from a business perspective, unless it's su successfully exploited, it's not a lot of use to you. So we, as RTC North and as the Enterprise Europe Network, want to help you to successfully exploit those new products, services, or processes, or your business model. Um, now, the, the innovation can be radical or it can be incremental. The point is that you've, if you improve a process, that is innovative. That is incremental innovation. If you create an absolutely new product that has never been seen in the world anymore, that is radical innovation. But both of them need to be successfully exploited. So now that we've sort of got a little bit of a picture about what innovation is, the question becomes, how do we manage innovation? How do we make it a part of your everyday business thinking? And innovation management, we believe, is the way to direct and organize your business to discover, evaluate, and develop ideas and turn them into results. Again, exploiting them, turning them into results. The key word in this phrase, to my mind, is evaluate. A lot of businesses come up with great ideas and then they're dismissed because perhaps they've been tried before and they didn't work. Now that isn't really an evaluation. An innovation management in an ideal world should be a documented process so that you're not relying on memory. And that when you do evaluate an innovative process or a product, that you can actually look back at previous uh, iterations of this idea and see why it didn't work earlier on. It is quite possible that the environment around you has changed since that happened. The point becomes, don't rely on memory. In an ideal world, try to document your innovation management. There is an innovation management standard, which RTC helped to develop. Uh, and if you care to check it out on the uh, ISO website, it is there, ISO 56002. Uh, and for those of you who like charts, that chart is actually taken from that document. And it actually shows you in a pictorial format, the stages that you need to go through 
and it identifies the key areas of your business and, and the processes that are necessary to accurately document that uh, innovation management uh, process. An innovation management system, it should manage your uncertainty to an extent. We can never eliminate uncertainty. We live in uncertain times. Ideally, it should increase your competitiveness. This culture of innovation, again, it's a very intangible and ethereal concept. A lot of companies tell me that they have a culture of innovation. The reality is that the staff are actually afraid to speak up because they don't want to be laughed at. Uh, maybe they've had a bad experience with putting an idea forward in the past, but it is absolutely crucial to encourage employees at all levels of your business to be creative, to be innovative, to come forward with ideas in an open and transparent way, knowing that number one, they're not going to be laughed at. Number two, they won't be told off. It won't count against them in the review. And number three, in the optimistic hope that their idea will be evaluated against the requirements of the organization. And if it does genuinely prove to be an innovation, whether it's radical or incremental, incorporate it into the business. It is the single best thing that you can do for your staff. We all know that the biggest motivator for staff is somebody saying thank you. There's no question about that one. Ideally, innovation management systems help to increase your productivity, they increase your sustainability and resilience, they increase your stakeholder satisfaction, as with your staff, no question. Um, you want an updated and updated product portfolio. Things change, things move on, products become obsolete. You have to keep yourselves fresh. Empowering your employees, keeping them engaged, massively, massively important. I appreciate that some companies don't have employees, but keep yourself engaged, keep yourself up to date, keep yourself thinking and keep your own mind active. It may be that you're looking to attract partners, collaboration partners, funding sources. If you can demonstrate that you have got a good ongoing documented up-to-date innovation management system, that excites investors. They can see that you are actively evaluating the options and the opportunities that are in front of you. Keep doing it. Yes, it will en enhance your reputation. It potentially will add value to your business. And it can help you with regulatory compliance in some respects as well. But the whole point is it's about surviving and thriving in a constantly changing world. The one thing we can be absolutely sure of is that nothing stays the same. I used to be young, now I'm not. Nothing stays the same. Moving forward from managing that innovation, there is a lot of help out there in the business support world to help you to do this, to implement these processes, to look at the systems that you've got and to give yourselves absolutely the best chance of getting back to that growth phase of your business. The Innovate to Succeed program, um, primarily funded by um, Innovate UK, UK Research and uh, Innovation, has been on the go for just over 12 months in this part of the world. Um, it's a three-year program. It has been slightly modified as a consequence of the COVID crisis, and it now has a second arm called Survive, Stabilize, Grow, which we are calling SSG because it's just a little bit snappier. Fundamentally, it is this, they are the two sides of the same program. Uh, and the SSG program will run for another, at least another two years as well alongside the um, I2S program. What does it provide you with as a user of business support services? It provides you with up to seven days of support. Now that support can come in a number of uh, um, guises, which again, I'll, I'll cover slightly later but it's time support, whatever that time support might look like, whether it's one-to-one -one meetings, whether it's one-to-one, -one, uh, um, well, one-to-many webinars, uh, whether it's research. Again, I'll, I'll cover those in a little more detail later, but it's up to seven days of support, which are typically delivered over a six month period. And the support is founded on an established innovation management framework, which has been developed by uh, Innovate UK, 
and the, uh, the delivery partners such as RTC North to ensure that we do get consistency of application across the country. This is a countrywide program. What we do is we, in conjunction with yourselves, the clients, we devise an action plan. We then deliver that action plan with yourselves, we fulfill it, we go through a final review and we capture the impact at the end. There needs to be impact. If there's no impact, we shouldn't be doing it with you and you shouldn't be doing it with us. There needs to be impact. We need to make an impact on your business and we need you to help that impact to last. Fundamentally, it's all driven by you, the clients. We don't tell you what you need to do. We discuss it between us, but you decide what it is that you need to do. One thing RTC North will never do is tell you how to run your business. It's your business. We can offer suggestions and advice, absolutely. We can go through diagnostics with you, yes. But fundamentally, the decisions are yours. It is your business. And the day will come, of course, when we step out of the door and you need to keep, it make, keep making it work yourselves. It's a little bit like um, Gordon Ramsay going into a restaurant. He can change the menu, he can change the staff, he can change the operation. One day he walks out and it has to keep going by itself. The I2S and the SSG programs are both fully funded for el eligible companies. Um, the el eligibility criteria, I think, are on the next slide. Uh, so we will just cover those shortly. And it gives you access to a team of experienced innovation specialists. It isn't just me. There are at least 15 people spread across the offices. That is part of what we're recruiting. We want there to be more. We want there to be at least 20. Um, but that team of experienced innovation specialists, I can draw in knowledge on uh, access to finance. I can draw in experience from manufacturing, from lean manufacturing, from process improvement, uh, from operations. Any aspect of business uh, uh, functioning, I can draw in the expert expertise if it's not an area that I feel I can cover. That's the beauty about the programme. It's not just about me, it's all about you. This is one of the diagnostic tools that we use for the Innovate to Succeed programme. Um, some of you may have come across it, it's called a growth mapper. And it basically takes a snapshot of your view of your business. It's not my view, it's your view of your business. Up to six people can participate in the process and in essence it asks you a number of questions about various aspects of your business, whether that be innovation, whether it be marketing and sales, whether it be strategy. And then the answers are shown individually from each participant and they're combined into an average. This gives us a very, very good uh, start point for conversations. The interesting thing is that in most businesses, you tend to find that the sales director thinks sales is fantastic. The problem is in operations. The operations guy thinks it's all down to finance that's a problem. So this gives us an opportunity to dig into all those areas without having a dig at the people. That's not what it's about. It's about understanding any challenges that the, area, the particular areas have and addressing them in the best way that is humanly possible for that business. Growth Mapper, very useful tool. Um, please feel free to check that out online. These are some of the areas that we are able to cover for our clients on the um, I2S and SSG programs. The main ones that people immediately are drawn to are grant funding, of course. But grant funding isn't the only way to raise finance for your business. And grant funding probably should only be used as a, as a stabilizer on the bike. You shouldn't rely on grant funding to keep your business going. The business should be sustainable under its own uh, steam without the need for grant funding. It's always nice to get a grant if you've got an ongoing project and we can uh, assist with finding where those grants are and pointing you in the right direction to find them. Um, but grant funding is not the only source of finance for businesses. There is private finance. We can help with pitching to investors. I'll come back to that one later. We can help with internationalization. We're part of the Enterprise Europe network. If what you want is a collaboration partner in the Ukraine, there's a fighting chance we can find you one. IP, intellectual property. This is an area where a lot of businesses probably haven't given a lot of thought. 
or perhaps had the time to give it thought, or maybe had the maybe they haven't had the finance to give it thought. But there is hidden IP in a lot of businesses, which potentially could be valuable. It could be licensed, it could be protected, um, and it could give them inherent value within their business if they ever come to want to sell it. We have access to um, an IP audit plus program run by the IP office, whereby we can get you £3,000 worth of IP attorney time, which is significant, for a cost of only £500. Uh, and that is a very, very popular scheme. Numbers are limited on that one, as you can imagine, but it is a very, very useful uh, tool for some businesses. Market sector research, yes, that's certainly something that we can help you with. We have desk-based research people within RTC. And if um, sales and marketing and client, client engagement are one of the aspects that we identify as being necessary in your business, yes, potentially we can do some sector research for you at no cost to yourselves as part of the uh, engagement. Conceptually, we will, with your uh, input, build an action plan using some all or, or, or alternatives to, to these um, aspects to make sure that you derive the maximum benefit from your engagement with RTC North. In terms of eligibility for the programme, you do need to be an established business. It's not aimed at startups. There are other programmes which are specifically aimed at startup businesses, such as the Adventure programme. Um, but in terms of eligibility for this one, you do need to be an established business. You do need to be trading, either in goods or services. We would like you to be innovative and ambitious as well. We want you to be hungry for growth and because that is where we can add the most value for you. Yes, we would like you to be developing new products and services. We can also help you to identify areas where you can develop new products and services. So, if you fit those criteria and you feel that this program could be of benefit to you, please, please leave a comment, um, contact Chris or myself after the, uh, after the webinar. Uh, I'd love to have a chat with you. One area of raising finance that is nothing whatsoever to do with grant funding is uh, equity finance. And one aspect of the uh, Innovate to Succeed program that we ran very successfully uh, the back end of last year and the early part of this year was a process called Pitch Fest, which conceptually was a little bit of a dragon's den scenario. We identified uh, a significant number of high net worth individuals and uh, venture capital companies. We um, found a cohort of companies that were looking for investment. We coached those companies in how to make a positive impact with their pitch deck, um, giving them the insight into what drives investors, what the investors are looking for. We helped them to develop the pitch deck in terms of practicing their pitch presentation, what to include, hints and tips, how to make a compelling case for investment in that business. And identifying and enunciating the value proposition. All the candidates went through the uh, first stage of the process. We then had a selection day where all the candidates did a dummy pitch to a, a specially selected audience. Six of them were chosen to go through to the showcase day in front of the investors. All of those companies are now actively engaged in discussions with those potential investors. They are all local companies. They are all in this area. Fantastic. We will be running another pitch fest process towards the end of this year. Watch this space. If you're on the Innovate to Succeed program, you can join in the pitch fest process. So if um, external investment is something that you're looking for in your business, please speak to RTC. Grant funding, that old chestnut. Everybody loves free money. Um, as we know, free money is very rarely available. It does exist. Uh, it isn't quite a unicorn, but generally free money, you've got to fight to get it. You've got to fit specific criteria. You have to uh, go through pretty rigorous application processes, but we can help you with that. We can help you shape your proposal. We can help you review your proposal. We can help you search for 
collaboration partners if it is part of a collaborate uh, uh, pitch such as a, an Innovate UK competition. Horizon 2020 grants are out there. Um, there is a new round of Innovate UK COVID grants coming out at the end of this month. If anybody's interested, please contact us. We can point you in the right direction. Signposting is a very big part of what RTC North do, either in uh, normal times or in COVID ridden times. Generally speaking, we don't give out money. We, we generally, most of our programs don't have money uh, funding attached to them. Occasionally we do, but not very often. However, we generally know where the pots of money are. We can signpost you towards them. We can make handshake introductions and we can assist you in shaping your proposal if you do feel that grant funding is the right way for you to go. In terms of global collaboration, moving forward from the funding, what do we mean by global collaboration? Well, global collaboration is not just about exporting. It can be about that, that can be a part of it, but it isn't just about that. It can encompass all kinds of collaborative relationships in markets other than the UK, whether that be R&D, whether it be getting subcontract work or outsourced work done, whether it be licensing in overseas markets, franchising potentially, or getting supplies from overseas, getting manufacture done overseas, or cross-border investment. Our team of internationalization specialists at RTC North are waiting for you to ask them to help you. Please, please don't let them sit there twiddling their thumbs. They want to do this for you. So if you've got any ideas about what you could do cross on a cross-border basis, contact RTC North. Let's see what we can do to help you and point you in the right direction. The keys to success in um, internationalization of finding the right markets got to get the research done we can help you with that finding the right partners got to get the research done we can help you with that building that trust and confidence yeah this these are difficult times at the moment but um, business relationships will still continue business will still be done and cross-border business will still be done whether we're in the EU out of the EU with COVID without COVID trade will continue it has done for centuries it will continue finding agreements, getting commitments, and, and identifying the mutual benefits that, that are there to be had. In terms of the Enterprise Europe Network, as I say, RTC are part of that, and we have um, partnership agreements in over 65 countries right across the world. We can leverage that power on your behalf. We can find market intelligence. We can identify potential partners. Um, I will demonstrate to you how we can do that. Just to give you an idea, partnering opportunities. There's a Dutch company here. This is just one that I picked up randomly from our online portal. A Dutch company looking for a manufacturer of textile or canvas bike covers. Now they're looking right across the whole of the network. If you, if you could supply those, you would be uh, made aware of that. From an export perspective or an external collaboration perspective, yeah, a UK based company is looking um, to offer a pharmaceutical treatment out for, for cancer right across. So it's looking for partners in other companies to distribute that, to help it to get those, uh, that product and those trials operating. It's a two way process. There are people looking to do business in the UK, and there are UK businesses looking to do business cross border. We can create a profile for you, include you on these notification networks and find you the partners that you need, whatever that partner might look like. There are also matchmaking events. Um, at the moment, they're obviously all being done virtually. Um, these are ideally globally based summits to bring people with common interests together. They are being run globally at the moment, uh, sorry, uh, virtually at the moment, but um, they still are a very, very powerful tool to find the people that you need to help your business to innovate. There's also the GBIP, the Global Business Innovation Programme. Um, we're not allowed to say trade missions anymore because I don't know why. It, perhaps it sounds a bit too imperialistic, but uh, we call them Global Business Innovation Programmes now, whereby um, a group of people with a specific interest in a specific market area will visit another country. They're currently on hold for obvious reasons. 
but that hopefully gives you a high level overview of business, business innovation, of what RTC and the Enterprise Europe Network can do to assist you with your business innovation process. I look forward to any questions you've got. As I've said, I will try my best to answer them um, in any way I can. If I'm not able to answer them now, I will make sure you do get an answer. Thank you very much for listening and the floor is open. Thank you. And thank you, Glenn. You should text a mini the kind of question about filtering. But yeah, attendees, delegates, please pop your questions in either the Q&A or the chat. I'll kind of get the ball rolling and while that happens. Um, yeah, actually not really a question, more of a, a testimony, I suppose. We've, we've worked with Glyn, we started this whole process and we found it really useful for Shu. Um, I really like the fact that they've, they've listened to what we, we are trying to achieve growing the business and the fact that we're trying to explore new sectors. So they've actually gone away, come back with a load of useful information that we can now use for our sales and our marketing purposes in the next six months. So yeah, so if you've got any Thanks for that, Chris. Man. Thanks for that. That's my big plug. Question-wise, <laughs> um, I suppose the sources would be quite useful. Where, where would be a good place to start for sources for question? If I want to learn more, where would you recommend going first? Sorry, if you had questions? Yeah, I'm just thinking if I'm a delegate and I've got loads of questions, where, where's the first starting point? Uh, the, the start point would be visit the RTC North website or visit the Enterprise Europe Network website. Um, they have got stacks of information on there. There are links to external websites, particularly to Innovate UK with regards to uh, grant funding competitions, etc. Uh, alternatively, just give me a call. I am, or drop me an email. I am more than happy to field uh, any inquiries that come through. Uh, there is a national inquiries gateway, which yes, uh, that that covers the whole of the country, but please, if for, a, for a more immediate response, please feel free, drop me an email, give me a call. I'm, I'm happy to help in any way I can. Even if I'm not the right person, I will absolutely put you in touch with the person who can answer the question for you. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got all these attendees. Where are the questions? Somebody oh, ask a question, please. We need one question before we go. We've got to have one audience question, otherwise just me and Glenn having a chat. They're, prob they're probably asleep, Chris. Let's get real. They've probably gone to put the kettle on or uh, get, a, get a drink of iced tea or something. I need to pick on some of the attendees and call them out. <laughs> Come on, somebody ask a question. Just one question, please. What, when do you show up and leave? All right, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love oh, it. Oh, there we go. We've got one. Thank you, Rachel. Um, <laughs> I received a grant from Brand Yorkshire last year. Is this still available this year? A grant from Brand Yorkshire? Grant for Brand Yorkshire. Ah, uh, right. Okay. That was probably the Access Innovation Programme. That one has uh, come to an end now. Um, so unfortunately, that one is not is no longer available. The, the way that these programmes run is that they tend to have a time, time horizon on them. A programme will last for 12 months or sometimes two years, three years. Um, but that one was running last year. Unfortunately, not available again this year. Will there be anything similar on the horizon or is it? Uh, not, there won't be a direct replacement for the Access Innovation Programme. The, um, the Innovate to Succeed Programme is a follow-on from it, but it's not a replacement for it. Um, there are other programmes run, as I said, by the Adventure uh, Programme, for example, out of Bradford. Um, could well be worthwhile contacting them for additional support. Um, there is support around the digital space, as, as I think I've spoken to you in the past about, Chris, with yeah. digital, digital enterprise run by Leeds City Council. Um, there, are, there are new programs coming through that I, that I know about in the pipeline uh, that will be uh, introduced over the next two to three months. Some of them are in response to COVID, some of them which were already on the schedule anyway. But there isn't a direct replacement for that Access Innovation Programme, I'm afraid. Fair enough. Um, Rachel's just followed on with the question. Oh. Um, we've been badly hit by COVID. Um, what would you recommend for us? Can you just elaborate a little bit more on that, Rachel, maybe? Uh, the, 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 all I can say is, speak to me, Rachel. That, that is what I would say. 
let's have a conversation, scheduling a, a, a Teams or a Zoom chat. Let me understand more about how it's hit you, why it's hit you, what we can do to address those issues um, and what, what uh, support I can give you or signpost you to that, help, that will help you to get through those issues and come out the other side, get into that growth phase again. That's what we want. It will do. Please will. do. Please okay. do. Yeah, please do. Yeah, that kind of makes sense, to be fair. Obvious answer. Yeah, it makes sense. Blim will, it genuinely will help you. Any final questions before we close it out there? Last chance. Stay now or forever. Hold your peace. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. No, no, that's that's it. Oh, well, many, back you. many, many, many thanks, Chris. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, anybody who is still out there that's listening. It's kind of really weird not, not, not being able to see you. But uh, thank you for being here anyway. I do appreciate it. And feel free, give me a shout, drop me an email, give me a call. If I can help, I will. Brilliant. And then just a final couple of thank yous in the chat. Um, final thing from me, the final webinar for today is at four o'clock. Rachel Moore is going to be talking about social media and how to do scheduling some more behind the scenes technical stuff to help you save time. That's at four o'clock. If you want to register, I'll just quickly drop the link in the chat now. So you can book straight on for that before. And then we've got loads of stuff going on, including me and Rachel tomorrow. So please tune in. That's it for me. Thanks now. Thank you very much, guys. Take Cheers, care. Folks. Cheers, Bye. Bye. Oh, Glyn, can you please let me host again so I can pause the recording? <laughs> there you go. Uh, sorry. Uh, there you go. There you go. It should be yours now. Yeah, go.